MCAT 2017 Crown, Biochemical and Biological Foundations of Living Systems. Passage 6, Congestive Heart Failure and Diuretics. As you view the reading of the passage, you'll notice some highlighted snippets of text. What I want you to do is garner meaning from these specific selections in order to answer the questions that follow. Good luck and happy reading. Paragraph one. Congestive heart failure is caused by an inability of the heart to pump blood and maintain proper blood flow throughout the body. This inability can occur because at least one chamber of the heart does not pump at peak capacity. As a result of poor pumping action, blood can pool in various areas of the body. Since 55% of blood volume is plasma, and plasma contains approximately 92% water, excess extracellular fluid accumulates in these areas. Areas where the blood pools, the accumulation of excess ECF, that's extracellular fluid, can occur in various parts of the body, depending on which chambers of the heart are not pumping effectively. Paragraph two, excess ECF causes many symptoms of chronic congestive heart failure. To relieve the symptoms, diuretics are commonly used to remove the excess ECF. Furosemide is a diuretic that works by blocking the sodium potassium 2 chloride uh, symporter in the loop of Henle. Once the, this ion pump is blocked, the volume of urine is increased and the amount of ECF is reduced. To the body, physicians compared patients who had continuous intravenous doses of furosemide to patients who had oral dosage of furosemide. For each patient, researchers measured the amount of sodium in the urine per hour. Okay, so this denotes the sodium concentration. Patients with continuous intravenous dosages on average had 18.5% um, higher millimoles of sodium in their urine than those with oral dosages. Figure one, oral dosage of furosemide behave as intermittent sources of furosemide, seen in the dark bold line, while an intravenous injection of furosemide delivers continuous, seen in the dashed line, delivery of furosemide. This intermittent behavior, intermittent behavior occurs because of the time delay between ingesting oral dosages of furosemide and their action in the kidney. The spikes of intermittent oral dosages cause 18.5% 18.5% less millimoles of sodium per hour compared. To continuous delivery through an intravenous injection. Where in the loop of Henle does furosemide block the ion symporters? It is A in the descending loop of Henle on the basolateral side. Is it B in the ascending loop of Henle on the apical side? Is it C in the ascending loop of Henle on the basolateral side? Or is it D? in the descending loop of Henle on the apical side. I'll give you a moment to think. All right. Okay, so furosemide is filtered out of the blood through the lumen of the nephron, this tan yellowish region here. 
There's little furosemide on the basolateral side outside of uh, the lumen. The basolateral side is the side in contact with the capillaries. Um, so yeah, the basolateral side of renal tubular cells have little furosemide, okay? Moreover, the symporter is located in the luminal side, the apical side, to remove salt from the filtrate. So the correct answer choice is answer choice B. In the loop of Henle, wa only water reabsorption occurs in the descending loop, okay? So iron reabsorption in the loop of Henle occurs in the ascending loop, all right? Therefore, furosemide blocks the ion symporters on the apical side of the ascending loop of Henle. All right, okay. Which is the best biological classification to describe the function of the drug furosemide? Is it A, agonist, B, irreversible agonist, C, counter ion, or D, antagonist. I'll give you a moment to think. This requires outside knowledge separate from the passage. So if you don't know what to think, just sit tight, the answer's coming. That's what we're here for, okay? If you knew everything, we wouldn't need to be here. All right. Okay, let's uh, break this down by defining some of the answer choices. Starting with counter ions. Counter ions are chemical species that accompany other ions to maintain electrically neut neutral solutions. So furosemide is not used for this purpose. Answer choice C is out. Agonists are molecules that bind to receptors and stimulate the receptor to produce a biological response. Here, furosemide is stopping all biological responses, so this is wrong as well. It's neither an irreversible agonist nor an agonist. By default, the correct answer choice is going to be answer choice D, okay? Antagonists are molecules that block the ability for a biological response, as shown here, furosemide is blocking a symporter so that no ions can pass through it. That's the correct answer choice. It's answer choice D. All right. The concentration of ions is responsible for the movement of water um, across cellular membranes. In what way is the concentration and flow of water affected by the use of furosemide? Is it A, salt levels decrease in the medulla, producing a gradient favorable for water retention um, in the tubules? Is it B, salt levels increase in the renal tubules, producing a gradient favorable for the retention of water in the tubules? Or is it C, Salt levels increase in the medulla, producing a gradient favorable for the retention of water in the tubules. I'll give you a moment to think. This requires a little bit of outside knowledge, renal anatomy, and um, concentration mechanisms. All right. Okay, so water flows in the direction toward a higher uh, salt concentration. Okay, so um, water is reabsorbed in the kidney in the descending loop of Henle. The reabsorption is dependent on the relative salt concentration. Um, of the loops surrounding. Okay. Is 
if salt does not flow out of um, the filtrate passing through the lumen into this medullar region, the relative salt concentration between the medulla and the contents of the tubules favors retaining water in the tubules, okay? So the correct answer choice would be A, salt levels decreased in the medulla. This, uh, um, this monochromatic scale, the slightly darker shaded region, producing a gradient favorable for water retention in the tubules, okay? All right.